Knicks versus Pacers. This is the matchup of um, the best first round, the winner of the best first round series versus the winner of the worst first round series. Like, really? The Knicks beat the Sixers in an epic, absolutely tune in thing. And the Pacers beat the Bucks in a sad. We had a like, sweep in the first round. I, yeah, but the like. The Bucks won six games. Yeah, but like that sweep was exciting. <laughs> well, those, game... Both those two, like. I was much happier tuning in for like OKC versus New Orleans. But than I Bucks was Pacers game Pacers. three when it went into overtime and Chris Middleton hit like the ridiculous shot to get it into overtime. That was a good game. There was a good game, but mostly it felt like the Pacers were actually a bit disappointing against a completely broken Bucks team. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you, like sometimes when you're watching two teams just like scrape themselves through the filth to like be the one that comes out in the end of just like some non-inspiring basketball. That's like. I mean, I remember, I remember watching maybe 2018 or 2017. It was Pacers versus Raptors in the first round, and it went a full seven games. And it was the saddest first round series I have ever watched, where yeah. there was no reason either of these teams should be allowed to play in the second round of the NBA playoffs. But someone had to win, and down the stretch of that game seven, the like the Raptors messed up. Actually, I think like, like I think it was a Frank Vogel complete. Like, complete mistake of where he like forgot to sub in i forget the exact details but like the pacers made this big brain fire to the end and the raptors escaped by the skin of their teeth hmm. this series was not as bad as that one but it was still like i think it was um not very much fun however yeah. i'm very i'm i'm very excited for pacers versus knicks their first um the first game of a sort of controversial win for the Knicks the, you know, like they, they were 121 to 117, but really it was a one point game until just like, you know, some, some foul shots at, at the very end to kind of seal the deal. A lot of, a lot of people were upset with the officiating kind of going both ways. The NBA's last two minute report came out and we're like, guys, it's no big deal. There were, yes, there were some missed calls. It didn't like overly benefit the Knicks who like, anyways, it was just like, I think this is a fascinating series because Tom Thibodeau and Rick Carlisle are both coaches that love to over rely on guards or like both like guard whisperers who aren't afraid to lean on an. I thought you were going to say they're starting lineups. <laughs> well, there's that. There's that as well. Well, no, I think no. Carlisle will go deeper into his back. Yeah, Carlisle first. goes deeper. Yeah, but, I think aside from this similarity they have at the top of being sort of like, I will use an inefficient chucking guard like like crazy not that carlisle is doing that this year with the pacers but like besides that they're the exact opposite like tibbs is a stubborn rock that play like it's so clear that his beliefs about how basketball games are won are like so specific and he yeah. hasn't changed them at all during the years he's changed the like the the minutia of the strategy to adapt to the current play but he believes in playing playing through don't pass the ball too much so that you don't turn it over can we just build an offense where there's no passes so there's no turnovers? Can we just get one guard just like battering, ramming, and getting up any shot they can and then winning the turnover and rebounding battle and hitting just enough threes that we win the game? That's all Tibbs wants to do. That's the I, that's Tibbs' basketball paradise. So he's living his best life right now. This is yeah. the perfect Tibbs team. Where Rick Carlisle is the most like mercurial, adaptive like if tibbs is a is a rock like carlisle is water he's absolutely murdering you on the back end of the scouting report like the stuff that is footnotes on your scouting report carlisle's taking those and being like that's how we're winning the game yeah like we're winning the game because i'm like subbing in like tj mcconnell at this moment to play against this matchup and i'm running this action to make sure that like obi toppin is all of a sudden like relevant in the in the nba playoffs it's, it's little things like that that carlisle just just kills you with they, they made it he made it i thought uh, Pascal Siakam was going to get annihilated in the first. Like, oh my God, he's going to be guarded by OG. This is like a nightmare matchup for Siakam. And it was just like, he couldn't really touch Siakam the whole night. Like he was just like running around, kind of passing, playing in transition. He didn't score like a, a ton of points, but it was like Carlisle used him in a way where it's like, we're not really going to really let you defend Siakam. Like he's like, he's just going to be kind of like, like running around and, and, and messing you up rather than like, the way Siakam would play in Toronto where he would like get the ball and be asked to make decisions and stuff like that. So I thought it was a really fun game. I think the mm -hmm. Pacers are extremely fun. I think the Knicks are extremely fun. I really like both these teams. The Knicks have obvious advantages on, on defense, but Indiana put up 122 offensive rating in game one. So I don't think it's a, like it should just be assumed that the New York defense can handle these Pacers. So 
What did you think after one game? Well, Mitchell Robinson's done for the playoffs, it looks like, um, uh, which is unfortunate. No. Especially because that's one of the seven players <laughs> that uh, uh, was willing to play. Well, Precious Achua, it's your, it's your time to yeah, fill in. Precious Achua only saw the floor for four minutes in game one, so I'm assuming you'll see a little bit more in game two. Um, yeah, I mean, you've, you've heard of a seven-man rotation. Get ready for the five-man rotation of the Knicks. Yeah, I mean, Robinson and Miles McBride are the only guys who really, really saw the court in game one, and, you know, they played 12 minutes and 11 minutes, so it wasn't even that much. Just Josh Hart isn't isn't real, right? Like, Josh Hart, that's a... No, I, I think, like, listen, I, I have long been a little bit skeptical of this idea that, like, you know, hey, you play over 40 minutes per game in the playoffs, your risk of injury goes way up and you're going to get hurt because we play in a game... we. We have an era now where players play less than ever, um, and we have better training medical staffs than ever, and, and players miss more time than ever. So, like, I don't know. I don't know what the exact correlation is between, play, like, minutes played and injuries, um, but I, I do think there's something. There's something, something to the reality that, like, uh, you, you, you play a lot of minutes the regular season, you reach a higher level of conditioning than, than guys who don't. I think I'm like the, the minutes are correct. The fact that he played 48 minutes um, last night is is wild. But like I'm more just sort of like like Josh Hart has low key been like the Jimmy Butler of this year's playoffs. Like yeah, he's just sort of like he's been playing. Obviously not to the same ceiling, but he's been playing out of his mind. He's been physically bullying people. He's not missing threes. Um, it's like it's just this like Josh. Like what's Josh Hart like? You know like averaging in these like he, he put he had 24 13 and 8 in game one shot 70 percent from the field played 48 minutes he's averaging 18 steals. a game 18 points 12 rebounds five assists and shooting 45 percent yeah that's at least point on, on that's at least like regular games. season jim lee butler <laughs> yeah yeah that's but like the jump from josh hart to this is like maybe even greater than the jump of regular season Jimmy Butler to playoff Jimmy last year. And it's like he, he's combining the hot shooting of the Heat's role players with the like gutsy physical play of Jimmy Butler. He's like, it's more like instead of him being Jimmy last year's Jimmy Butler, he's last year's Miami Heat, like all by himself. Like mm-hmm. he's playing out of his mind. He's And he looks like, I mean, he looks very happy, very confident. He's bullying people out there. He's the meanest rebounder in the world right now. Yeah. Um, absolutely I just, just running in there banging bodies and grabbing boards away like, i just think wild. this is a prime example of like absolute perfect fit you know um yeah like there's the old adage for for role players specifically like superstars will often a, a, you know succeed anywhere but for role players situation really matters a lot um fit really matters a lot style like style of offense and everything and and this is just the ideal team for Josh Hart. And there, there were some people on Real GM coming at me the other day because I was, I was, I was somewhat uh, defending the Portland trade of Josh Hart. But you know, like at the same time, like what, we'd never see this version of Josh Hart in Portland. Um, what would Josh Hart have done in Portland? I mean, he was all like, like they need, they really needed Josh Hart. Like also, people need to stop pretending like that players are the same versions of themselves wherever they go. Like Josh Hart in Portland was just terrified of shooting yeah like like he was just like he just really seemed like he didn't want to um shoot the basketball at all after like like you know in that second season there he just like he just didn't like he'd pass up open shots kind of thing he's always been an incredible rebounding guard and had good yeah. versatility like that's been so consistent across his career so there's obviously <clears> been room for him as like a starter level player in this league but but this is you know this is wild no one saw this coming it, like i mean right now Josh Hart is firmly the second best player on the Knicks. And I think you could even really argue he's been the best player on the Knicks. Like he's just not shooting it as much as Jalen Brunson. Who's taking averaging 40 shots a game, 47 minutes a game in the playoffs. Yeah. That's, that's wild. Who do you think, like, who do you think is the second best player on the Knicks overall? Like if Josh, if Josh Hart was playing a little bit more in his normal, is it still Josh Hart to you or is it someone else? Like this is a weird team. Um, I mean, it's, Brunson is the guy, obviously, and yeah, then it's yeah, just yeah. Ananobi and Hart are, you know, kind of yeah. trade off who's who's the second baton, depending on the yeah. night. I'd probably lean Ananobi overall, but I can't make that argument with how Josh Hart is playing right now. I think Ananobi's still just like 
the guy holding their defense together over like the full course of like of the game because i mean now we're gonna see like iheart have to play um a lot more minutes with with mitchell robinson out and and they do lose a little bit of their monster offensive rebounding advantage so that could be a way for the pacers to make this a series but precious is a pretty good rebounder though yep just like, not that's on the that main thing he does of... well <laughs> but... No, the main thing he does well is, is perimeter defense. He's oh, he's true. really he's, really he's, he's so switchable at his size. He's like, um, so yeah, offensive rebounding he he, he is also solid at. But I uh, yeah, I'm I'm curious. I, I really want this like OG versus Siakam matchup, but we like barely really got any looks of it in because of the way that Carlisle ran the offense. Um, the Pacers seemed su- like surprisingly immune to a lot of what the Knicks were trying to do defensively. A lot of the game, like the Pacers just found ways to like continue to score. Now, can the yeah. Pacers stop the Knicks in any sort of meaningful way is like, I don't really see what their path to do that is. Well, I mean, the Pacers, top... the Pacers have really maintained their spacing um, even after acquiring Siakam. Like they just, they just yeah. really space the floor out very well. I think they're the best corner shooting uh, team in the NBA. Um, yeah, Ben Shepard has been big for them. He's shooting fifty percent from three in the playoffs. You know, as a rookie. Um, yeah, yeah. He um. They root for for a minute. They really missed Buddy Heel go screens. Like the, the the offense surprisingly fell off a cliff, and to end. Um. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just saw. I heard my cat trying to trying to claw his way into something. Um. When, when Buddy Heald went away, like, um, why am I blanking on Tyrese Halliburton? Kind of like did not know what to do on offense yeah. for like a month or two. He was, it was like he just kept looking for Buddy Heald, who wasn't there, and it was like Andrew Nemhard running a completely different action that wasn't really working. So, um, and Tyrese Halliburton has not been able to score in these playoffs. No, he's either. actually their low you scorer know. in game one. Yeah, and that's and it's been like you know he's averaging fourteen points per game. And shooting 30 percent from three so he's just not found he's not getting to the line like he's just he's a pure playmaker right now he's uh yep and he's doing a great job at that i'm not saying he's not contributing out there but it's like it is a bit un unusual and um let's see if he can turn that around at some point or if that is that like even important because the pacers have been managing to find ways to function at a very high offensive level without tyrese halliburton scoring the ball so if they just wanted to get 10 assists and score five points per game like if that's how they win then then good for them but yeah it's a very they're they're, they're the weirdest team i think at the playoffs like i can't get i don't even really know what the rotation is going to be some nights kind of thing. Like I like they're bringing in Isaiah Jackson all of a sudden, like Obi Toppins, like back in the rotation. I mean, he's never left the rotation, but like, do you see he threw a, like in a play, like in the fourth quarter, like went like through the legs yeah. for a dunk and tri- that was like, that was pretty audacious. That was yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, no, they just play Imagine. a lot of guys. Um, yeah, it's weird. You don't see this from playoff teams a lot. They had played nine guys in, in game one and it's not like a couple of guys came in in garbage time like nine guys played real minutes um yeah yeah exactly so, yeah and in the first i mean there's also like i feel they have a couple of guys that they like you know they run they play nine guys but then they also sort of like well maybe we're gonna mix in jalen smith or maybe we're gonna like we can play doug mcdermott you know what we're keeping jarris walker on ice like they, they could go even deeper um if they, I mean, they won't, but if like someone went out or they had a specific matchup, I just feel like Car- Carlisle's very like, he's got his like weird bucket of toys and he's going to throw them out at you in really random orders and keep you off rhythm the whole time. So I think Tibbs is such a bad playoff coach. And I think Carlisle's such a good playoff coach that I think the Knicks are in for maybe more of a fight than they accept, expect, even though I feel like the Knicks have major advantages that are that are kind of hard to imagine. maybe this is one of the real them. ways that you can leverage depth because like a team that's playing nine guys and has all these different configurations is i would assume harder to game plan for and harder to defend than a team that it's like oh this is our seven you know um, yeah like and, i would and, find it so hard to game plan against the pacers i think that's a, yeah. i think that's a really good point because i don't know what i like they run weird actions and they like again like they used pascal siakam in a way last night that i've never seen him 
been used by them before at least like it, you know it looked it looked strange and off to me but it was like it was clearly effective because he got like a decently efficient like 19 points in that game yeah. sort of thing without needing to like really touch the ball all that much three yeah. different guys like with 16 field goal attempts like tj mcgonnell like being empowered to like bully people one-on-one like it's like and their guys have such different skill funky. sets you know like tj mcconnell is a completely different player than halliburton um ben shepherd's yeah. a very different player than andrew nimhard you know like yeah obi Toppin and pascal siakam are night and day right so it's not like yeah like you just have to you just have to like completely change the way you're defending this team all the time yeah what's your prediction on this series um Man, I really want to pick the Pacers. I just, <laughs> but I don't know if I can. Like, um, part of me is like, can Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, and Anobi can they keep this up? Like, I don't, I don't know if this is the series where the wheels fall off. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think the wheels are going to stay on throughout the Eastern Conference Finals necessarily. But I don't know if they start falling off yet. So, yeah, I think I think the Knicks can keep this up for one more round. I'll take Knicks and six. I'm going Knicks in seven. I think that, like, I, I just think, like, the Pacers have the ability to be extremely adaptable and confusing. So it really is going to be, like, you know, the Knicks are going to come out and do the exact same thing every night. And if there's adjustments, they're going to be simple ones. And, and the Pacers are going to do all sorts of freaky, crazy wizardry and see if they can find little advantages. And I think that this could this could be a series. I like I also wouldn't be that like I don't believe in the Pacers so much that I could just picture them getting like run over and 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 crushed really quickly if things don't go well enough but like I tend to believe in Carlisle and I yeah, think but he has They took their lumps in game 1 of the Bucks series and they've been pretty good ever since. I think uh, yeah, I, I I think that's true. I think them persevering through that, they've got a little bit more confidence coming into this one, but it's still just like it's a, it's a weird team. Um so, but yeah, I'm going. I'm going Knicks in seven. 